Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, morning. guys. Morning, morning, morning. It morning. is Tuesday night for us, Wednesday for you guys. So before I forget, that means tonight, Bible study. Estudio Biblico. Every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have a Bible study. It is, it is interactive, so we always invite you to come because these are pre recorded, obviously, the night before, so they can be released at 3 in the morning. But the time when you can be interactive and, and with us is Wednesday's Bible studies. Yep. That's live. And um, Sunday's live, but I'm behind the pulpit, so it's really hard to be interactive. Mm -hmm. So the best time to communicate really is Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Yeah. yeah. You know, I was thinking that there's a few things I want to share, but I kind of want to get into the scripture first and then share. What okay. do we do it backwards? You know, we usually share a little bit because there's a few things I want to share. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So guys, you guys ready? Yep. Let's do it. Put some cinnamon in your coffee. It makes it taste good. That's old school. you think the school. printer's too loud? No. no. That's why we have these mics right here. You guys hear the printer? Even if they can. That's the prison ministry printing. Yeah. So guys, um, we're going to dive in and then we're going to chop it up with you guys. Uh, we're going to go to Hebrews, the, word, the, the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, check this out. But instead of Hebrewing, I want you to brew. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mom joke. <laughs> so, um, you guys ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, check this out. Check it out. Check it out, eh? Uh, That's serio. <laughs> Super serio. Super serio. Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Bam! So Hebrews 12, right? Mm -hmm. One and two. One and two. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat. No <laughs> parasitic, para, parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put, it, he could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. Keep going? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. Wow. Mm. I'm going to have fun with this one, man. This is this is one of those Mike Tyson punches that just knocks you An out. uppercut. Bow. Uppercut Bow. where the super cat uppercuts the other cat. Man, I, I before we get into it. I got to drink my mango drink. I'm glad you're liking those. They're sugar-free. I know, they're really good. Yeah, that's good for you. Surprise, usually I don't like sugar-free stuff. Yeah, he's been drinking sugar-free stuff. This now. is, um... It feels blurry and then we go... Costco, guys. So... I'm actually drinking water a lot more. Yeah, I drink water like a fish. Okay, so right out the gate, this first verse, because we're talking about verse 1 and verse 2, is powerful. Boom! Right? It says that um, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, guys. This, you know what this means? It means every believer that has walked this planet before us is our witnesses. You know, there's something very interesting Jesus said. He says, I am the God of the living, not the dead. And they're cheering us on. Yeah, they're cheering us on, man. Think about that. 
all the all the way from from the believers around Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, Peter, James, every generation that came after. Do you realize that they passed the torch, and you now hold that torch? I just thought about the Olympics. Yes. Like when you're in the Olympics yes. and you're passing on the torch and you're just going and going and you keep passing it on and you're going and you and you just keep on going to keep that. Oh, man. Yes. There is a cloud of witnesses cheering us on. So I find this encouraging because especially now, so many people feel alone and you are not alone. You Not only do you have an audience of one, which is Jesus, which is enough. Do you remember playing relays when you were young in yeah. school? And they Same would be thing. like, pass the you baton. have to run, you have to pass the baton, and you got to keep going just to keep it all going. you got to keep passing mm-hmm. the baton. Yeah, same thing. That's what it, I just envisioned. Same that. thing. You know, God. you are not alone. You are a team. And that's a beautiful thought because that means somebody else ran with that baton and passed it over to you, and you carry it. That's why the gospel never stops. That's why the word of, the word of God can never be stopped. You know, because of that, that is powerful. And, and it's just like, it, it, it almost scares me, but not, not in a bad way. But like, wow, like, like Paul and Peter and these women, and they're cheering for us, literally cheering for us. You know, and, and um, it's like we, a humbling, it's like a humbling thought. We are know? surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, lay, let us lay aside every weight. So you know what that means? Everything that's holding you back, everything that is, if you got some heavy boots, take the boots off. If you have a heavy jacket, take the jacket off. Get all that weight off of you. All that weight of the world, guys. The weight of the world. That's what it's talking yeah, about. Strip down. Start running and never quit. Yes. Because you have a cloud of witnesses that are cheering you on. People that have passed from this world, whether by old age or whether by violence because of Jesus, they are cheering you on. And it's a take off all that weight. I like the way it says no extra spiritual fat. That means mm. all that religious stuff and all that. And get rid of it. No extra spiritual fat, man. <laughs> it says lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. All that stuff got, that got you wrapped up. Is that the parasitic? The parasitic Yeah, sins? you know, and, you know, there's a brother and I never asked him. I never even knew. But I think yesterday, today, he said, man, I feel so free. He didn't say to me on his wall. And he'll know because I know he's watching this. And he doesn't have to share with me what it was. But he says, I feel so free now that, I, that my secret sin is done with. You know, and I, didn't ha- I don't have to know. It ain't none of my business. But I, but, but I, I cheered. Because I'm like, amen. Because I know this brother has, I know the Lord has great plans for this brother. So it was beautiful to for him to say that it doesn't matter what it is. It's between him and God. But the very fact is that it's done. He says, man, I feel so... I can't forget how he worded it. But basically, that's how I took it. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of times people don't run the full race because you still have that old weight on you. And, and nobody else knows it, but you know it. You know, and that's why this is saying, and I, and I believe this is talking to somebody specifically... That you have a cloud of witnesses that are cheering you on. There are people, people, men and women of God that are cheering you. Angels in heaven are cheering you on. Jesus himself is cheering you on. And it says, so lay aside all that weight, man. All that sin that ensnares you, get rid of it. How does it word it in there? The, 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 that part? <laughs> it says, um... No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both mm. began and finished this race we're in. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, man. Let's do this thing and do it with excellence because there's a cloud of witnesses. And here he says, study how he did it. Wow. That means keep our eyes on him. To be Christ-like. Yeah, keep our yeah. eyes on him because... We need to follow his steps. We need to follow his example. Yeah. One time, I'll never forget. i never forget this, right? Um, Sister Dana, her dad, 
when I still had the church in the basement, when the, when I first started House of Rest, guys, it was in the basement of my house. And the sister, her parents would come to the church. Well, Dana and her mom and her dad, her, her mom has gone on to be with the Lord. You know, but I remember one time I preached and I, I broke down because I was talking about my grandmother. You know how um, she never got to see me preach. All she saw me was be a gangster, you know. And she loved me, you know, she loved me and she knew I loved her, but that's all she saw me as. And I think I broke that. It's obviously on the channel somewhere, you know, but um, after the service, Dana's dad comes up to me. He goes, David, I want to tell you something. And I said, yeah. He goes, your grandma knows. I'm like, what do you mean? And he took me to this verse. He says, we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And he says, she's watching and she's cheering. <laughs> you know, and it was weird because I had read the Bible so many times. And I don't know why I just glossed over that verse. You know, and I'm, I, I'm forever grateful to Dana's dad for sharing that verse with me. Because that verse, every time I read it now. I picture all the people in my family, you know, my grandma, my grandpa, my tia, Benny, my, all of my aunts, you know what I mean? And they're just like, so sometimes in this life, when you get discouraged, I think of them cheering me on and we keep going mm -hmm. and we keep going. I tell my daughter, um, my daughter, Angie, the one in the movie, always with you. When, when did she graduate? Last year. Last year out of San Jose State. Mm -hmm. You know, and I told her, I said, you know. During she, the whole pandemic. Yeah, she, she didn't even get to have an actual graduation for her bachelor's in San Jose State. That's a huge deal, guys. I mean, I'm a high school dropout. My dad went to third grade. My grandpa, who knows what how far he went to school and he worked in the fields. And I remember telling my daughter, I said, you know. You getting your degree, not not just the first two years of your associates, but your actual bachelor's, a medical bachelor's, you know, um, I said, you didn't do it just for you. I said, do you understand the sweat, blood and tears and the generations that that passed the baton to you, you know, and that's such a great thing. That said, you didn't just do this for you. You did it for me. You did it for grandpa. You did it for your great grandpa and your great grandpa and great grandpa back. Who knows how far back? Yeah. This is such a huge accomplishment. And if that's just a worldly piece of paper, how much more the things of God? Yeah. How much more the kingdom of God that we can pass this beautiful baton on that, that has been passed to us? Yeah, and that baton is a legacy. Yes, it's a legacy. There are legacies, you know. Um, I think it's, it's it's the way we gotta we call it a baton, but it truly it, what it is. It is a legacy. Yeah, you know we we don't know, guys. We don't know that a lot of see God's a gen generational God. How do I know that? Because the what He gave and what He promised to Abraham, it didn't get fulfilled until generations later. Yeah. So a lot of times when God speaks something to you. He's speaking into your lineage. He's speaking into your legacy. Yeah. What God has promised you could be something, the fruit could come in your children and your mm -hmm. children's children. That's why it's so key and so important to be a living example for them. Because you can make or break a child's faith before they even become adults. Amen. You know, so we have a great cloud of witnesses, guy. And I love in verse 2, it says, So look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And I'm not sure how it worded it there. Where are you at? We're at verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher. Oh, it says, keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Hmm. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and he's the end. He came not only to be born and to to die for our sins, to be the perfect Lamb of God. He, he's the only one that could free us from sin. But other than that, he came to give us a living example of how to live this thing out. Amen. He says, 
everything I did, he says, greater things will you do. You know, and, and he's a perfect example. Don't ever try to be like another pastor, another evangelist, and even another Christian. Be like Jesus. He's the example. That's why it says here, look unto Jesus. Don't look unto David or Sharon or whoever else. You know, and you've said that to people too. Yeah. It says, look unto Jesus. You know, it's like, we have a responsibility to be examples. It doesn't mean that we get to pass the buck and say, oh, you know, uh, do as I, don't do as I do, do as I say. Mm-hmm. No, we have to be examples and say, practice, I'm going to practice what I preach. What you hear me preach is how I'm going to live. But it's the same time you shouldn't look to people, you should look to Christ. Absolutely. You know, it says looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, man. We keep our eyes on, on Christ and Christ alone. You know, and I know something I had seen on the remember that sister's channel I found? Yeah. Man, I wish I remember. I never got to watch it all. Yeah. You it, you, you watched it and you said yeah. that it was really it was really yeah. good. It, well, I posted a video of her on Facebook, but that's not even the video I was talking about. I can't remember what it is she said. Maybe. There, were, there, were, there was five things. Mm-hmm. It was five things. Um, well, it wasn't that video I, I wanted to quote right now. It was oh. one of her other... I ended up watching like four or five of her videos. Oh, okay. Um, really good stuff, you know. And um, I think this is what kind of made me think of this subconsciously. But I can't remember. Anyways... Um, guys, this is a beautiful verse, and just know you are not alone. Amen. You are a part of a team. That's why the church is an assembly of people. You know, it's it's not lone rangers. It's an assembly of people. We are cheering you on. There's mm-hmm. people in heaven that are cheering you on, and Jesus Christ Himself is cheering you on. So you are not alone. Uh, and like He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. You know, so and we're um, not we're not meant to be alone. No. You know, we're we're not meant to be alone. I think it's it's important that we realize that and that we know that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know there's there's times of separation, but that separation isn't to to bring solitude and to be alone. It's it's time of separation to draw nearer unto God, and yeah. and there's a big difference in in that solitude of just being alone and not having fellowship. And then there's that separation when you have that separation because you're, you know, drawing nearer unto the Lord and, and God is doing something within your life and God is doing something within your, that moment in in your life. So um, know the difference guys, know the difference because when you truly separate from the body, um, of Christ, what happens is a lot of a lot of the hurt and pain of the world seeps in, and that's where depression and mm. loneliness and and that's where the enemy, um, you know, begins to. It's like you know, it's like that, like when we talk about when the when the, the lion begins to you know separate and oh and, yeah and separate its prey and it, it begins to devour yeah. um it, it it starts to look for its prey because it knows that it can devour it when it's by well, it itself looks, it looks for the the one the one that's isolated yeah and and you know and that's the same thing that the enemy will do the enemy will will look at that person that is in solitude and and by itself and and you know the depression begins to set in the loneliness and all of that and and it's an open door, guys. So just be very, very careful um, in that time of separation. Is it really time of separation or is it, you know, solitude because mm-hmm. you're really um, separating yourself from, from you know, the body of Christ? So, you know, use discernment, use wisdom in what it is that you're um, exactly doing. So listen listen to, to what it is that the Lord is really uh wanting to where he's trying to bring you the environment that he's trying to bring you in and out of so pay attention guys really really pay attention to that good stuff yeah so you know (laughs) what it's time to share now oh i'm a what why are you laughing why do you look over there and then you laugh oh no i've looked away but 
it's funny, right? Because today <laughs> um, we took, we're trying to figure out how to, because we have insurance on Sharon's phone. Oh. <laughs> right. Well, we have insurance on our phones. Mm -hmm. So she had cracked cracked it in the it's back. It's been cracked it's for been over cracked. a year. But then her battery started dying out real quick. And I'm just like, we have insurance. Like, let's try to see what's what's going on, yeah. you know? Yeah, and then we found out it was like $29, $30 just to get it fixed. Well, yeah, you jumped ahead, but yeah. Okay. But basically, yeah. And um, so we go down there, right? And I didn't know how much the deductible is going to be. So when they said, oh, yeah, it's $29, we replaced the screen, right? And, and the back part. So I, I've had a chip on mine for a few months, like two months. And every time I would swipe, it would kind of catch my finger. So when I heard, oh, yeah, it's a $29 deductible, you know, and I'm like, oh, do you have another screen? Because mine has something, too. I'm just like, hey, let's get them both done, right? Because he already took yours and already said, yeah, come back in an hour and we'll mm -hmm. fix it. You know, mm -hmm. put a new battery in it. He was a screen comes with a battery, he said, remember? Mm -hmm. So he goes, yeah. So he gets my phone and he, he was about to drop the order for it. And he goes, he goes, you you have a, uh, the, the, what's it called? He said, like, you still have the plastic on the it. The plastic on it. I'm like, no, I've had this thing for a year already. No, I don't. And he goes, look, <laughs> and he peeled the thing off and I felt heck of dumb, right? I'm like, are you serious? I've been doing devotionals for a year on this phone with the plastic over my t my my front screen. And it was, he peeled it and it was like brand new. It was brand spanking new. Brand Nothing. new guys. I didn't have to get a new screen. My screen was perfect. It's just that plastic had been. All jacked up. And so, what did you tell me in the car? <laughs> he said, I'm like, he said, I forgot he, how I said it. He says, um, he goes, I, I actually feel my age. Yeah, be, yeah, I feel, <laughs> feel my age because usually those guys are probably like, oh man, this, this older man didn't know he had plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's something my dad would do. Yeah, he was like, that's something my dad would do. He goes, now I actually feel my age. That's funny because he does that his birthday. So. Guys, I am like, I consider myself a very, very technical person. And I'm doing a devotional with a piece of plastic all scratched up over my screen. Okay, but wait a minute, guys. So that's not it. What do and you then mean? I go and I ask the guy, I said, so does that mean that I have the plastic on mine too? And he goes and he's like, yeah, you have yours on too. <laughs> Both of us. So both of us dorks had know. our plastic. How many selfies have you taken? Group shots of, on the all the trips to the the cabins. Oh my god! With a piece guys. of plastic over your phone. But here's the thing. I told the gentleman. I said, I have all kinds of little chips on the front of my screen. I told him it's all messed up in the front. He's like, you have plastic on yours too. <laughs> At that point, I didn't even know what to say anymore. So he still had he still replaced. I still had to replace it because it had a crack. chip on the side, and yeah. then it was broke. It had been broken already for quite a little over a year in the back. So I was like, "Oh gosh." So I don't know if you can tell. I I don't know. You know, I'll I'll be able to tell once I render this. But that was kind of funny and messed up at the same time, man. Yeah. But it was cool. I got out of I got out of paying twenty nine dollars. He just peeled the plastic. <laughs> yeah, saved twenty nine dollars. I yeah. still have to pay my twenty nine ninety nine, but oh so can you hear that, do you think? It'll pick up. Oh, sorry, I'm tapping my foot. Um I got a I got a little a little promotion at work today, yeah. which is nice. It's cool. Yeah. It's a small little small little promotion which was really nice that was a blessing yeah. what else did we do today we got, finished you finished oh yeah that's another thing well we got new mics you know how we had new mics the other day well last week mm -hmm. well i didn't realize that i ordered 16 foot long mics <laughs> so you so end up tangled up so all this week I had 16 feet of wire. Like, literally, the phone is, a, what, a foot and a half away from me, a foot and a half away from... 
So together we had 32 feet of wire here and it was like this huge bunch. And I'm like, I can't take this anymore. I can't take this anymore. We keep like, it was, we'd be entangled of a whole bunch of wire. And I said, why did you order this thing with all this wire? Yeah. And I have to sit here and roll it up and try to tuck it under my leg every so time. So every time we we're going to do devotional, we had to untangle 32 feet of wire all over again. So I thank God that today we got them, um, you know, these wires and it's only six and a half foot each. So that's a blessing. <laughs> And I'm like, you know what? We're going to hold on to those because we do want to, we're talking. Oh, we have a far away, huh? Yeah, doing some far away. If we're ever going to do a little clip or a movie or anything. Whatever it is we're going to do later, we'll always have those. Or if we go outside even, if we yeah. do something outside. Uh-huh. Well, like springtime, sometimes we go and we record outside. But I doubt we'll ever be that far away from the camera. True. That don't make sense. But either way, I mean, they're I there. Um, so the other thing is I finished two paintings today i still got to take them in to get scanned because that's how we're going to get prints out of those but man I, i'll tell you why it's a huge weight off of my shoulders i said it a few weeks ago that i'm gonna put my brushes away for a little bit to concentrate on publishing what do you what did you say you're gonna do to your left hand oh if, if this hand tries to gra grab a brush i'm gonna smack it that was hard not really so I, I put my brushes away. I put my easel away just for a few weeks, guys. So so um, I'm done with the painting for Dale, but I still got to take it in to get scanned. I'm done with the other painting. So I'm going to take both to get scanned. Um, I'm going to continue to... I have prints, you know, so I still have the two, the two galleries. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the setup at the church. We still have the website. As far as the prints, I've already done. But as far as new paintings... I'm done for a few weeks. I'm going to fully concentrate and dive into a lot of the things I have ignored on the publishing side. I have an audible to do. Oh, wait, another, you know, was a, a sign, a sign was that I got another box of my testimony. <laughs> a whole box came, not, there's more than this. You've been waiting for those for over a month. Yeah, I had like ran out. a month out. and a half. So this is um, on Amazon. And it's as an ebook, but I have copies. Uh, so if you're interested in it, let me know. Somebody told me I needed to finish reading it because it just said some really nice things about me in there. Oh, yeah? Did you? Yeah, well, you, you read that last chapter. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. When I was writing it, you did. Oh, yeah. Why'd you say no? You didn't. You read it to me, I think. What's the difference? It's different when I read it. So... Um, I'm finally going to do the audible to this. I'm going to do the audible to Dale's. I'm going to do, um, Pastor Thomas's. I got to finish, wrap up his two. He, he's our, our missionary pastor from Nigeria. And, um, and then I'm going to the Always With You movie. That's going to be a novel. So I told Sharon, I ain't touching a brush until I, I knock those things out. I said, I, I got to do that to myself or else I'll just keep keep on procrastinating because thank God that I've had painting after painting after painting after painting. But now it's like, okay, I finished this one. I'm just going to boom, put the brushes away and just really fully um, uh, do what I need to do for the publishing. It's a new year. It's a new everything, you know, so yeah. So be looking forward to that, man. I'm really excited about that too. And finally getting those audibles done. So many people have asked me, when are you going to do the audible for yours? You know, and, and I know I promised Dale, you know, for the audible of his. His is 400 pages. Thanks. You know, it's not easy, guys, doing an audible. Uh, to do the narration, it is not easy. I remember when I did the audible for Midst of My Confusion, my other book, I had to do it in four different sessions. Because believe it or not, um, two hours of reading really... Um, it starts to hurt the throat yeah. because it's like, you're not just reading like just all lazy, like to yourself. You're, you're reading and you're, you're expression of e your expression, expression, clarity, you know what I mean? And uh, if you mess up, you know, um, obviously I edited, so I didn't have to start the whole chapter all over. I again, remember but... you would go through moments, you'd be doing something and if you'd make a mistake, you'd do this weird little things. And... I well, I would clap that way. I would see the waveform on editing and everywhere I saw it jump, I knew that's where I messed up. So yeah. that was easy. It was a little system I made so I can find my mistakes. 
Can you imagine reading 30 minutes and then not knowing where the mistakes are at? Mm. So every time I made a mistake, I would clap. So it shows that, you know, that clip. It would, it would make it clip, you know, where it turns red. Mm. But um, it's, not, it's not easy narrating a book at all, man. You are basically acting it out. You know, especially yeah. when the, the characters talk and and the fluctuation and it's just it's not an easy thing. But I, I'm actually excited to do the audible for this one and Dale's. You know, and um and I'm gonna end up having to do an audible for Always With You. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a there's a lot of things, guys, for the publishing company that we have. As you guys know, we've released this book, Mr. My Confusion, um, Dale's book. His second book, God's Fingerprint, God's Fingerprint with, with um, Brother Alfonso. Amazing, amazing book if you haven't read that one. Can't wait to release Lydia's yeah. when she decides. And, you know, prayerfully yeah. in the future, I'll release mine. Yeah. But like these right here, they're, they're all like ha- part started. I, I want to just, boom, wrap them up. Get them you done know, with. Wrap yeah, them up. get them done and over with. If you haven't read Alfonso's book, I did his Audible. I did his, and so you can get his, and it's me doing the narration on Audible. If you don't have the Audible app, actually, you get your first book free if you sign up for it. So um, I think that's all I wanted to share. As far as that, the screen, the plastic on my screen. Can we please get our flyer done for Family Paint Night? Oh, yeah. I need to get that done this week because yeah. I need the families. We need to get um, a date going for our family paint night. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you said you weren't going to pick up a brush, but we are going to pick up a brush for that. Yeah, for that. Yeah. Yes. That's so different. for that, we are going to pick up a brush, guys. That's okay. Different. So he's not going to he's not going to stop his hand for that. Yeah, um, that's different. Yeah, that's completely different. So we are definitely going to pick up a brush for family paint night. Um, so that's a for sure thing and. We really want to get our date going for that so that way we can notify everybody about Family Paint Night because yeah. I know the kids are really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. They're waiting for it. So let's get a date going um, and let's get it set up so we can have the families, the parents go out and buy what they need to buy so we can get it done. Sounds a okay. Like, all right. Sounds like a plan, guys. So have a good day. Have Enjoy good. your coffee. Have a blessed day. Be blessed. Oh, Bible study tonight at 7. You'll probably yes. get the reminder. Oh, I got to do the schedule. You know, I always schedule it so yeah, people get it. Absolutely. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. Yeah. So by the time you watch this, you should have the, have it on schedule on Facebook and YouTube for Bible study, just as a reminder. Uh, and if you are not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. That way you get notifications every time we go on Monday through Friday doing these devotionals. You get the notification for Wednesday night and for Sunday morning. Uh, hit like, leave a comment. We love comments. The first thing we do when we wake up, well, one of the first things we do when we wake up is yeah. we read the comments, yeah. you know, and then throughout the day. Um, so we really look forward to that, and we really appreciate when you leave a comment, leave anything. I, I don't care if you just say the word frog. Just say frog. <laughs> Put a dot. <laughs> I don't yeah, know anything. Whatever, just say hello. You know? Hola. So, and one more thank you for watching uh, Brother Johnny's video. He hit over 400 videos already. Oh, that's awesome. 400 views, I mean. Not 400 videos. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, you guys know Brother Johnny. I, I talked about him on another video. And I'm sure he's, actually, I asked him, I said, does that encourage you? Because I've been waiting for this brother to get behind the pulpit. And he says, you know what? It, it does encourage me. Good. So that, you guys made him feel very, very encouraged, you know. <clears throat> so thank you for that. I appreciate that. On his behalf and on our behalf, we, we appreciate that. Amen. And I can't wait to to meet our baby, man. I'm, I'm just excited. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Yeah. Can't wait to meet our baby. Oh, baby. Not our baby. Well, where is my baby? We're talking about Jose Solis. Yeah, Jose and Angelica's baby. Yeah. But I do have a little baby. It's a baby Yoda. I don't know. I actually, I actually carry around with baby Yoda. He's so cute. He's like a little tiny plush. He's a little plush, but he's a little baby Yoda. You know, he's so cute. Baby Yoda, so yeah. adorable. All right, guys. We love you. All right. Bye. bye.